Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping into a PvP tier list and give you guys kind of an updated idea of where these weapons lie in PvP. First off, we have Cleo Menace, if you want to say hi and kind of give us an understanding of what you uh, kind of all entail with New World. Hey Graphic, thanks for having me on here. So, uh, I alpha tested New World for about like two years, so I've been playing the game a total of about like pushing three years now. Jesus, it's a long time. But, uh, you know, um, I, I took a break cut for these past few months, so I got a stream, twitch.tv slash Cleo Menace. You can uh, check out some of my old footage there, play a lot of Rapier. Uh, but yeah, I'm just excited to come back for this upcoming Brimstone patch, and uh, just kind of liking the changes they made to the game. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and thanks for uh, joining us here to kind of walk us through each and every PvP weapon. Uh, do you want to walk us through what your kind of knowledge is on PvP, good guy? Hey, what's going on? This is the Good Guy TM. Uh, usually, you can usually find me at twitch.tv slash the Good Guy TM. Uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of healing, boy gauntlet stuff. I keep up with everything combat related. I love the patch notes that they keep on dropping on us, and uh, you know, hopefully, they keep keep on bringing up some good changes that uh, the combat really needs. Fleshing out some other weapons that are you know less used, and getting these abilities in a place where you know you can use all six abilities. Yeah, no, I definitely think there's some really good things and changes that are coming over the next couple of weeks and months with the Brimstone patch. And that's exactly why I thought today would be a good time to talk about where these weapons stand right now with the current updates. So the first weapon that comes to mind is going to be the Rapier. So the Rapier is one that me and Cleo Menace, for a matter of fact, have used for really... I don't know, two years for me, probably three or four years for him. This is a weapon that we have known to love for many different reasons. It gives you that survivability. It gives you the, you know, the repost option. It also, unfortunately, does have a lackluster blood tree, but the grace tree is enough to make it such a strong weapon. Definitely when paired with, you know, the life staff or even the spear at this point, many other, you know, different mage builds. Cleo, where do you think this weapon should really go? I think it. I think it's A. I mean, Grace is super strong. Some people will say S, but I. I think you know, Life Staff definitely takes the cake for that. But uh, I. I think A is good. I mean, it's just a lot of mobility with Grace, and um, it, it allows other ranged builds to set up properly and do what they need to do. That just wouldn't be possible if Rapier wasn't in the game. Yeah, I would agree with that. Good guy. What do you think? Uh, would you agree with an A? Would you say that's a pretty solid place for it to be going right now? Absolutely, uh, A for sure. I mean, um, it doesn't matter what really what weapon you're using, com you're comboing with. I mean, besides maybe strength weapons, I guess at this point, you know, you got your dex weapons, you got your mage weapons, you got you know, healers are using it on their back bar to just keep themselves alive and keep themselves pumping. You know, these huge AOE heals at all the time. It's 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 crazy, uh, but it always takes the cake. Honestly, it's been an A tier weapon, no doubt. It's an A tier weapon for a while, just because of so many different weapons you can pair it with. And, and for that, it's a definitely solid A for now. We're going to continue, like I said, to plop these weapons down on the chart and list where they belong. And then at the end, we may move things around depending on some of the things we discussed throughout. So the next one we have in line is the Great Axe. The Great Axe is something that I haven't used too, too much in the recent updates, but I've used it so much in the past. So I want to ask somebody that knows a little bit more about this weapon, and that's going to be Cleo yet again. He has used a lot of these melee weapons when it's come to, you know, getting into these war segments. This is going to be more about arena and small scale, though. So where do you think Great Axe is going to kind of stand in this tier list? You know, it's I, I would say definitely A as well, because... Gravwell is still so oppressive. I mean, Gravwell has just seen crazy up and downs from being dog shit in alpha to getting fixed to, and seeing its full strength in live. And then, um, you know, if you could just bait them on their stamina, rip a Gravwell, I mean, it's just GG, you know? Yeah, they don't I agree have a with that. I mean, everyone just gets shredded. It's so much utility, fortify, healing, sustain, uh, chase. It just, it's a really all in one package for countering melee, so. And what about you, good guy? You agree with the A? Absolutely. I mean, it has all the tools in its kit where it can be played efficaciously in light armor, medium armor, heavy armor. Doesn't matter. Great Axe is going to be that sort of force there that you always have to keep your eye out for. You know, if you're not wearing slash gems, honestly, in your gear, you're probably doing it wrong because, you know, you got Reap, you got Charge, you got Gravwell. Uh, it doesn't matter if the Gravwell, you can dodge it these days. Um, it's it's going to be a force. You're not going to want to stick in around in it. And anything else that gets paired with the, the, the Great Axe's grab, grab well is going to be nasty. nasty yeah, combo, with the so. grit and everything and the perks that you can take with the Great Axe, I think it's an obvious A as well. I think the next bow 
in uh, really, this is going to be one of the harder weapons for me specifically because I've used it so much in the past. Haven't used it as much as recently yet again because bow is a much lower tier weapon in my opinion. I know you guys have some thoughts about bow. I just think it's hard to use bow very, very effectively. It's very hard to hit all your shots. You're typically not going to get hard uh, or not hard, but heavy attacks off. You're going to be using penetrating shot, which is really, really, really strong as well. But that's going to be just giving you one, you know, for sure hit. So you better be a very good bow user if you're going to have fun in arena or, you know, small scale PVP. When it comes to 1v1s, it's a little bit stronger. But, you know, arena in general, bow is going to be one that I typically see in a B or high B tier at the best. I want to see what you guys think, though. We'll start with good guy on this one. When it comes to bow, what do you think? Where do you think it belongs? You know, it starts with B. We're going to say as B, honestly, B for Bo. Uh, I, I think like it's it. got a lot of good changes lately. <laughs> uh, you know, we got that uh, beautiful update to, you know, the old splinter shot, the old split shot. I mean, if you guys know about it from the, uh, was it the, uh, the beta way back in the day, uh, that was what was healing and KOing people in one shield bash to a combo. But now it's very nice. Explosive shot's very juicy. You don't have to really aim, aim to the ground. You get a like, nice little proc, big damage from it, get the empower from it. Um, and you pretty much have options, you know, you do your three ADS skills between poison shot, uh, pen shot, and ex an explosive arrow, or you can, of course, you know, go I with the I didn't even mention explosive field. arrow. That update on explosive arrow made this weapon, I, I think, so much more unique, a uh, lot stronger than it used to be. Explosive arrow definitely bumped this one up to a high B instead of maybe even a high C or a low B for me personally after using that explosive arrow. I had a lot of fun with it, and it was definitely very, very viable in a lot of different situations. Cleo, what's your thoughts on the uh, the bow? It, it's strong, no doubt. I mean, I don't know. B, B plus for sure, A minus. I mean, it, it it's just one of those things, like, if you, if you can't hit the shots, you're pretty screwed. Um, the changes to light armor, it's going to be interesting to see how it affects ranged across the board in the Brimstone PTR. So... Um, yeah, I, I would say B plus for sure. I okay. mean, it's just, you know, if, if you whiff the penetrating or the penetrating gets blocked, you're kind of screwed. That's true. Like, if you have a sword and shield on the other nice. team, you're looking at a rough situation. Obviously, just yeah. throwing that shield up, you're pretty useless um, in a lot of yeah. situations with a sword and shield on the other team. You know? So because of that, I feel like it does make, um, you know, Bo just a little bit less uh, consistent at the very least. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's take a look at Blunderbuss because this is a new, new-ish weapon that a lot of people don't know really where to pin this one when it comes to PvP. I'm not even going to say my ideas on this one. I, I know for a fact, good guy, you have tried Blunderbuss before, and I want to know exactly where you think this one belongs in PvP. I love the Blunderbuss, honestly. It's a fat boy um, and certain like bigger scale. For, for a small scale, I'm, I'm not quite convinced it's an A. I, I got to say it's, I'm going to plug it as a B. Uh, B for Blunderbuss once one more time here. Nicely um, done. I, I think uh, the, the the good combos between you know the uh, uh, auto canceling, you know you, your your first pump, then you get the Azure Strapnel Blast, or maybe if you got the Claw Shot, you can do a nice juicy combo between uh, auto Claw auto, and you're doing a big amount of damage there. And uh, I think it's really tough to 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 deal with the amount of burst that it brings to the table, the utility it brings with Net Shot. So I think it's gonna be B. I just haven't seen enough of it. Quite, quite yet lately, especially with this patch, uh, to really confirm that it's maybe an A tier. I, I would agree with that as well. I think B is probably the best spot for it right now. Do you think it's before or after Bow, Cleo? What do you think? Uh, I, I think it's definitely um, ahead of Bow because it, it offers so much more group utility. Like the the um, the knockdown shot was a thing. I, I, I really don't use that much blunderbuss, but... Um, uh, blast shot is just super good set up for your team. Um, as off strap and blast is just an insane amount of of burst, and net shot is is just a great escape. I mean, I I would go ahead and say that it might even be higher than B. I mean, I I know me and good guy butted head on, heads on this, but I mean bur burst is definitely king in PvP scenarios, especially arenas. Like you just you want to burst that healer down as fast as you possibly can. Right. So, I mean, the combo of Blast Shot into an Azos Shrapnel is really strong. It's just Blunderbuss doesn't really have that sustain, so it's kind of like you use your CDs and you got to wait, whatever, 25 seconds for your Blast Shot to reset. So that's kind of the, the problem with it, is that it really can't trade as well. But, I mean, 
it's meant to be like that mid-range thing, like kind of a back bar. It did thing fill to a like little spot axe. there, right? So I think Blunderbuss was one of those weapons that made a lot of sense for them to bring out. We didn't really have a short range or you know maybe even a mid-range uh, type weapon yet. I guess bow is kind of mid-range, but we didn't have a short range. Uh, weapon that wasn't melee so i do like that we were able to bring this blunderbuss out it brings a lot of utility a lot of kind of unique battles that we haven't really seen before in arena so i would agree with that b spot i do want to go to uh cleo yet again for the void gauntlet because void gauntlet i know for sure you've used more than me uh you've become very very well uh versed i guess with the void gauntlet perks the uh, skills the abilities that they uh most pvp players are actually taking so where do you think this one belongs i i think I think an A, very strong A. Um, maybe not ahead of Rapier, but um, yeah, and, and maybe not ahead of Great Axe, but definitely like right right there, I think, because, um, you know, P uh, Petrifying Scream is great setup. You get a nice two-second route. Um, on top of that, that gives you a lot of Fortify. Uh, you also have um, Oblivion or Void Blade, right? You can rock Nullifying Oblivion, and you right there you're countering Hatchet, and uh, you get really good Weaken, and then... On Void Blade, you have the Voracious Void Blade perk, and now with the changes to weapon perks and armor perks, that goes from being 30% life steal to 50% life steal on a weapon. So, I know you can get some really good Void Gauntlets with that perk from like Barnacles. There's a, a VG you can get there that might be pretty good for PvP. Um, you know, like it just it counters Hatchet. It, it counters a lot of different things that you could trade with if you're spicy with it. It pairs great with Ice Gauntlet for utility and other things and setup and burst and. Um, I think, you know, well-coordinated screams with, like, a blunderbuss in your team or, or more bursts will really be key to countering healers. I would agree. And I think, you know, good guy, you run Ice Gauntlet and Void Gauntlet quite a bit, I believe. So is your kind of on the same pace here, same track here? You're thinking Void Gauntlet's maybe in that backside of A? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a bigger, bigger fan of the Orb of Decay in place of Oblivion. Uh, just because, man, when you start putting some dots on some people, put that disintegrate on them early on in the fight, and just kind of have them feeling weak and, you know, setting up your team, you know. A lot of other weapons have that sort of, like, is there a debuff on that guy? Is right. there a debuff on that guy? And, you know, it's unblockable, so uh, a lot of people just can't really handle it. It's really good damage, good good art, good opener, uh, and allows you to, you know, you know, mix your way into there with maybe, maybe you have Oblivion or Oblivion Scream. That's always a pretty viable combo still. Uh, not quite as good though in the small scale because you need to have a void blade to kind of touch up on people who might be getting really close. You know, you, you think about your flamethrowers, you think about your your great ass guys. Once they you know they expand their combos, you know, at least you got something in your back bar to kind of bring yourself back up to full HP and uh, really really duke it out with them and then kind of get that left click trade going on there. Yeah, no, I would agree with completely here. A again for the Void Gauntlet. I want to jump, though, to the Life Staff. This is, I'm going to go straight to Good Guy with this one as well. But before he even talks, I think this is obvious for everybody watching. S is just going to be where it's going. I, I don't care really what anyone else says. S is where it belongs. S is where it will stay. Uh, good Guy, can you please agree with me on this one? Yeah, dude, I mean, I, I saw a screenshot today, man. One million damage this one guy was doing. Uh, to a team with the life staff, uh, a guy had 460k HP healing, 460k thousand, 460,000 healing uh, within the end of the round of the round of the match rather. Uh, it's it's insane. It, it brings people back, you know, from from the, the you know bowels of hell pretty much, and brings it back to full HP instantaneously. Uh, it's tough to catch them when you have you know you get the rapier in the back bar. People know, you know, it's hard to hard to keep up, hard to really. Um, fight back when you have that sort of thing, you know, the, the AoE heal uh, with the, you know, beacon, sick ground, uh, you're you know, fighting 2k uh, heals over time per second, man. It's hard uh, to beat, for it's sure. Not, it's not going to be fun, not going to be fun. Once no, not right. at all. And I, I think the biggest thing right now, right, they think they nerfed it because they said, oh, you know, if you're heavy, you can't use it, which is great, good change. Pretty, I mean, you can use it, but you're going to have reduced healing. If you're a medium, you're going to have, uh, you know, no, no big bonus in your healing. But light, they, they changed it to light. They made it so that, you know, you have to use light if you want that big bonus of healing. But now they just go Rapier, Life Staff, and they just pretty much jump around, stay alive as long as possible. And that's why Rapier as well is an obvious A+, just because of 
you know, how well it pairs with the life staff. Cleo, what's your thoughts on the life staff? Do you think this, this weapon's just overtuned? We need something done about it because right now I do see a lot of comments in a lot of my videos, PVP videos specifically talking about how they came back to the game. They played against somebody with a life staff. Instantly they were demoralized, not very fun of a game, not fun in that interactive PVP at all. And they pretty much, you know, just left right after they came back. So I think this some, there's something that needs to be done. What's your thoughts on it, Cleo? You know, I, I, I can't really disagree. I mean, it, it's so strong, but it, is that is that tied to the fact that the healing is overtuned? I, I think so. Like, healers can pretty much just stay there, and unless you have the right build for it, like, I know you can crank a great X heavy, do your full combo, grab them, maelstrom them, and you might be able to burst, but there's just so much fortify going out, and I, I don't know, it's hard. Like, you can't balance from a 1v1 perspective. Like, casuals are upset that their build that's not built at all to counter a healer, you know, and then they want to quit. I mean, it's not really the best mindset to have. Right. Whereas, whereas like you kind of, there, there needs to be healing. Like it's just kind of standard par for an MMO. It, it's a tough scenario. I, I think it's definitely tied to stamina regen, mana management, um, you know, cooldowns of things. Like, like I, I think it wouldn't be a, too big a deal if, if the big burst heals were there. Um, if the the cooldowns were longer, or you had to m you know manage mana, but you know it, it's something definitely needs to be addressed one way or the other. Because I, I don't think nerfing repost is necessarily 100% the answer. I, I think it repost could be tuned down to where it's no longer a 360 stun, and it needs to be like an aimed frontal stun. That might help a lot. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely a tricky scenario with a lot of with a lot of factors. It's not just like okay, it's obviously not just the healing because. Well, if you think about right, like, every like other weapon, right? Seen. So if you think about every other weapon, Great Axe can be paired with pretty much any weapon. You can pair a lot of weapons with any other weapon. Right now, we're seeing pretty much one combo, right? So it's Life Staff Rapier. Definitely. I haven't really seen a different build in forever with just Life Staff and PvP. And I think that's not really interact. I mean, you don't want to be a Life Staff user right now because you're forced into one kind of gameplay style. So I think that's one of the bigger things, too, uh, when it comes to this Life Staff build or Life Staff users in PvP. So I want to switch over oh, and sure, go over to sure. Hatchet, though. Uh, Cleo, I know you specifically have had uh, some success with the Hatchet in the past. I know you know people that have had a lot of success with Hatchet. So where do you think this one belongs? This is a tricky one for me just because I know it doesn't have as much CC as you typically want in a weapon. Um, and it's hard to stay on top of somebody without CC. We have that with the rapier all the time when we're we're trying to get on top of somebody, but we can't slow them down really. Instead, they just keep, you know, dodge rolling away. So Hatchet does have that undying, which makes it so, so strong. But where do you where do you think this one belongs? I think a B. Like, I mean, the, the utility from it's great. Um, a lot of its uh, effectiveness is countered by Void Gauntlet. So that's why it doesn't really get that spot because it's so hard countered by VG. But I mean, it, it really is a great um, thing that, you know, you get great move speed, you get great healing if you're behind a pillar. Um, are, are we also talking about how OPR plays into this as well? So this is just arena and small scale. So just arenas? Okay. We are going to have a so, PvP tier list for OPR and war uh, for those of you who don't know. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn... Uh, Go down to the comments and let us know what you think about this tier list uh, before we get to the end of the video. But yeah, you can continue on that, Cleo. Yeah, so I think like for for that it's good, but like a lot of what throwing does, um, like blunderbuss kind of just does better. Um, but I mean, feral rush is really good. You get that root on someone, really, really get pretty much a death sentence if you get caught with that. Um, you know, the heal, the move speed on berserk is good. Just um, and and also um, me and Guga were talking about this too. Uh, the root on uh, social distancing is really strong as well. And that um, that that could be really helpful, and uh, it's also a stagger. So, and like interrupting healers, a good interrupt. So, yeah. But it, you know, just just blunderbuss has a little bit more of that uh, range utility as well as um, VG countering it. So it puts it in the B spot, I think. Okay, I would agree with that. Uh, but I want to see what good guy has to say because he's also played against it quite a bit as a mage. How annoying is this build to go up against, or really this weapon? Not really a build, but. Is the hatchet something that belongs higher than a B, or you agree with the kind of like a B or a B minus scenario? Yeah, I think agree. It's it's around a B. Um, like like Cleo said, you know VG. You know you bring the void blade out and you just start swinging at a hatchet person who just thinks they can trade you. Uh, it's not gonna go your way, man. You don't have the healing. You don't have to sustain quite there. You know a void collar on VG is just gonna out deal damage heal 
uh, I guess the, the the hatch itself. There's just no 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 place there at all in that sort of uh, scenario. Uh, I think that yeah, hatchet is gonna be a B. Uh, it recently got a huge uh, huge tune up with the throwing tree changes. Uh, Raging torrent, yeah, it's just not a viable weapon, not a viable skill. I play a lot of it in the, the arena. You, know, you you end up standing still, swing at air like you're a, a corrupted mob. Uh, <laughs> if you see one of them, yeah. So it's, it's it's just not there whatsoever. Uh, but Feral Rush, that's a good catcher. Um, and uh, with social distancing, as Cleo said, huge, 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 huge thing, man. Uh, you know, if you if you don't pull the uh, throwing uh, tree, uh, aim throw uh, perk, you can literally yeah, launch your social distancing throw at someone. And if you block during it, you will actually not move or take the whole um, the whole way backwards when you evade backwards. So you can pretty much stay on your target for the most part. Throw that that that, uh, that is kind of like a nice or, little change because that throwing I believe was pretty useless right before, like oh, nobody absolutely, nobody absolutely. was going throwing side of the hatchet. It seemed like yeah, it it definitely has felt a lot better. But for sure, social distancing. If you're gonna take anything from the throwing tree, uh, especially in a in a small scale PvP setting like that, that that's where it's at. I mean, that's your dis that's your uh, disengage. That's your engage really too. Because I mean, I've seen. I've personally done a combo where you throw a social distancing throw out there, and you follow up with a nice juicy feral rush on someone. And, uh, it, it puts some put nice some damage, damage on. Down might for root, sure. Might root them too, catch them off guard, you know. And if not that, then at least put a slow on them, and you get the haste too. Okay. Okay. So we like where hatchets at. Hammer is one that's really, really tricky for me. Obviously, it's got a different spot when it comes to larger scale PvP. It's much higher in my opinion. But when it comes to you know, kind of the small scale PvP. The uh, the abilities are all very dodgeable, right? So everybody knows what you're about to do. Most people are taking the same abilities, right? They're always taking Shockwave, it seems like. They're always taking Path of Destiny, typically. Um, and it's because they're such great, great abilities when it comes to CC, but they're just so easily dodgeable. So against a good player, this is, in my opinion, a low B. Um, but I know you guys are going to fight me on this one and probably bring it down even more. I just think Hammer does have such viable uh, kind of options with, you know, wasting with Path of Destiny, throwing a Path of Destiny at one or two or even three players in arena, making them, you know, spam dodge to try to get out of the way uh, to, to kind of, you know, get away from that sun. I think that's huge. But uh, when it comes to the damage, it's a little lackluster unless you're able to knock them down and uh, it's just something that doesn't happen too often. So where are you thinking the hammer belongs cleo i don't know i think i think it's in c range man i know you were because trying to talk I, me into I, it earlier I think, I, I think these ptr changes i think you could block path now really and and, and and while and while i think you might be able to block path now the shockwave sure. is shockwave is the ones coming up pretty soon oh shockwave Blocking right shockwave yeah because yeah, you could block path right now so for medium armor melee i mean path ain't nothing and um I, I don't know, like, I mean, yeah, if you're caught with the Shockwave, Wrecking Ball, Armor Breaker combo, if you're a Glass Cannon, you're fucked. You are literally fucked. You are going to die, right? So you can make the argument, like, yeah, that combo is a one-shot, but by the same token, like, what does it take for you to get there to get that combo when everyone and their mother is shooting you the fuck up? You know what I mean? Yep. It's like, it just, it, it takes so much to get into range. It's so slow. It's so predictable. And we all know there's the no meta, cleave, right? There's no in, cleave. In arena, the meta typically is just light armor, right? So everybody's light armoring, rolling around, has a million, uh, a million stamina with the shirking energy. Nobody's going to not use their dodge roll to just get out of the way of some of this hammer CC that's so predictable. So now I'd agree with you for sure. Do you have any other, uh, I guess, points that you were kind of talking about there when I interrupted you? Yeah, there's like no cleave on it, right? Like between a great axe and the upcoming great sword, you're gonna have cleave. You could just go great axe blunder. There's just better options for arena, I think, for more more utility that you could do at range. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Um, do you have anything to add on that one, good guy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, let's we'll start with this man. It's called a warhammer, keeping the war on. It's like uh, I, I used a good bit, <laughs> good bit of hatchet hammer uh, for a little while in arenas and. I enjoy, I enjoy it. I I would pick up, you know, it's a really unorthodox build, but, you know, I go Shockwave to kind of get the Bruiser boys up when I'm in the middle of the heat thing. Uh, wrecking Ball is really where, where most of the wrecking juice Wrecking Ball really is always from. fun to use on, you know, 10 people standing Love on the wrecking point. Ball. That was always a fun time. Maybe not always the best time to use it, but you'd just have fun screwing up all those Fire Staff users trying to throw down pillars. Uh, you'd just see, like, you know, five guys up front just clearing people out of that point, and it was always fun to watch at the very least. So good for war, man. It is. There's a lot of times that the hammer just 
does belong typically in war over this small scale PvP. But one weapon that really shines in both, in my opinion, is the Ice Gauntlet. So this is definitely a weapon that Cleo uses the most out of us, probably. I've seen Good Guy, you definitely used it as well. Uh, but I want to see, Cleo, what's your thoughts on the Ice Gauntlet? Where do you believe this one belongs? Yeah, I think it's A. I mean, it's just such a natural pairing for VG, as you've seen. It's a pretty common build that a lot of people run. Um, I shower. It's pretty much a death sentence if you're caught in it. We'll force them to burn their stamina if they want to live, and then from there, you can follow up with a grab well or another shower, and it's just game over. I've been really liking running um, Healing and Tomb that Good Guy told me about since I came back to the game. I mean, the cleanse is great, and uh, it's really nice getting that. What is it? Was it 30%, 30 HP back? Yeah, I was say, yeah, let me check my weapon right now. Yes, it's 30% heal, so of your base health. So really good. We'll scale even better if you're in medium and you have more tanky build. And um, you know, spike is just so fun. Just endless possibilities of skill cap there. So and you guys just right been fun now, like mastering spike. Right, and you guys right now. I mean, uh, I think good guy takes meteor shot or not meteor. Yeah, wait, what was that called? It's um, ice storm, right? Ice storm, and then. Uh, Cleo, you take spike, so you're able to combo that Correct, together. Yeah. So, so we combo it. I, I, I still think shower is better, but if we're in a team, it's great because we can combo each other with it. So it's it's good. It's a good combo. It's a, it, they just work really well together. Ice Gauntlets in general. I think Ice Gauntlet definitely belongs in the A tier. I would assume, good guy, you would agree with the A tier for the Ice Gauntlet, or you think it belongs in the S? I was almost thinking S earlier in the week, uh, but just recently, you know, thinking a little bit farther in detail on some of the weapons that are in front of it in the A tier, I think it's probably belongs in that you know a minus just because some of these weapons right now are just really really in good spots yeah i would say uh definitely a uh you know the recent emergence of ice pylon is uh, really interesting i mean that's a lot of damage you you got you gotta really respect the ice pylon lately these days it's a lot of damage if you don't take care take care of it very quickly and early on that's gonna it's gonna it's literally gonna probably out dps you honestly it, it does a lot of damage if you do not focus that ice pylon make sure you kill that thing right away in arena if you guys are playing arena and you're getting hit in the back and there's nothing back there there's an ice pylon you're missing and it is destroying you uh from behind so definitely take that one out um but i want to talk a little bit about the musket because this one's one of the most interesting in my opinions because nobody really knows where this one belongs because it depends on the player just kind of like the bow again, but even more so because the musket doesn't give you that kind of survivability or that uh, kind of movement that bow does. So where do you guys think the musket kind of belongs? So I'll start with you, Cleo, on this one because you were the one fighting me uh, trying to push that musket up in the tier list uh, when I was saying, you know, I don't really like the musket. It doesn't belong in small scale much. Arena, it's not very good. You don't have much movement. S plus plus. S <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, man. I'm kidding. Okay, where are you um, thinking? You know, it's just it's one of those weapons. Like like if you're like ninety five percent of players, it's it's gonna be like a C. It's gonna be a C. If you're Shroud's like kid, you're you're an S, you're in A A territory, right? Like if you can hit everything and you're really cracked, it's it's S or A. If you're honest with yourself and you're, you know, relying on traps and bombs, it's pretty fucked and you're you're definitely in the C bottom of the barrel. So uh, that's that's where I stand on and it. And I actually saw this hammer right here. Uh, did we ever? We said D, did we not? Or did I? Did we end up with C? D? I, oh, you know what I mean. I, sure. I feel like because I, I feel like in my opinion, hammer is is worse off than musket is in small scale. Um, but I wanted to confirm with good guy, where are you thinking these two weapons belong? Let's go re back over both of them because uh, right now, personally, I believe hammer is a worse off weapon than musket in three V threes. It just, like I said, too predictable, uh, when it comes to the musket, it's got that raw damage at least. So if you're hitting your shots, it's going to be a viable weapon. Um, where are you thinking good guy for these two? Yeah, I think I could probably see hammer being around D probably. Uh, there's no way it's going to catch anyone, that's for sure. I mean, it has nice homing on it. You know, it keeps you sticky to someone, but is he always going to hit? I don't think so. So I think, I think I can see it drop into D, honestly. Okay, and what's your thoughts on the musket? Did you think the musket is, uh, like I said, Cleo's thinking that it has a chance to be useful. I'm not too sure on it. Um, C is just kind of being generous in my opinion, um, but I would like to hear what you have to say about that one. Yeah, I think the, with the line of sight, you know, you know, play around that pillar, and you're not going to be mess messing too much with the musket. Uh, I think it also the musket is really relying on the rapier, so if you can't use the rapier right and you're not using it correctly, the musket's going to fall really badly and fall on its face just because 
you know, it's clunky still, uh, even a year later. Uh, you know, sure, you want to get your shooter stance, but you're you're vulnerable, man. You're in uh, ADS, uh, so you're, you're pretty much tunnel vision. So I, I can't quite say it's it's, uh, it's all that, honestly. Okay. Um, what do you guys think about the spear? Because the spear is one of those weapons that I'm excited to talk about because of all the perks. Uh, one of our buddies, Snowpledge, he plays with us quite a bit. He, uh, he's been using the spear quite a bit in Arena, and we see some of these combos he's laying down doing a lot of damage. Um, and these perks that you're able to run with the spear are only benefiting it into a, a just crazy amount. Like we're seeing uh, just, what, what did he combo the other day? I think we comboed like 8K right. in about Dude. half a second, it seemed like. Um, but where, where are you thinking for this one? Uh, good guy, you play with, you play with uh, Snow Pledge quite a bit. And he's pretty much a spear only player, it seems like at this point. So where are you thinking this one belongs? I know you've played against it as well. I gotta say it's a man. It's an all-around pretty, pretty well-rounded weapon. Uh, he's using the unorthodox, and you know, I was, you know, I always got a lot of pushback on this. But he's using cyclo, man, mending cyclo. Uh, actually, better see, leeching cyclo. And he's getting a lot of heals. He's getting a lot of damage. We're talking about 4K. You know, I, I end up helping him out by putting some buffs on him and get that 30% uh, damage cap from the exploited weakness. Uh, right capstone and the spear so he's he's doing he's dealing damage honestly and you know between that and you know, your perforate you got your skewer you got uh you know a lot of grit in there too in the bill uh you're gonna deal you're gonna be a, a menace so you'll be a force to be uh, dealt with that's for doubt no doubt about that and remember he, he doesn't take the last perk on cyclone that's an important note like he it's about like just the heal on that i mean it, it's really really strong heal it is, yeah, it is for sure. And Cleo, what do you think about it? You, th you agree with the A tier for that? Yeah, definitely, man. It's cracked. I mean, it's so good. It, 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 you, get, you get fast CDs, massive damage. Um, you know, just great fortify with perforate. I mean, it's good survivability. Uh, you get weakened on the skewer if you get the perk on it and empower. I mean, it's just solid weapon, man. Great, great. Uh, you know, kind of escape too with skewer and vault kick and get out of those ice showers. It's really good. Well, I'm going to stick with you, Cleo, on this next one because this is a weapon that you were talking quite a bit about when it comes to the sword and shield. You still believe it has maybe a spot in small scale in arena. We don't see it much when we play 3v3s, but where do you believe this one belongs? You know, I, I, I was thinking about putting it in A, but I, I think, right, like it's it's one of those weapons that if you're cracked with it, Leaping Strike is very impactful and offers slow and setup that I believe will counter healers. But the problem is that 99% of sword people like just don't ever hit their Leaping Strike and like make the weapon look really bad. So um, one of the big things so, is, right, the cooldown on Leaping Strike, isn't it pretty dang long? It is long. It's 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 17 seconds right now. I have a bunch of refreshing on right now. So but, it punishes uh, it you quite seconds. a bit, right? So you're, if you don't it hit does, that yeah. Leaping Strike, you're you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be kind of useless to your team for a little bit, in my opinion, at least. That sword and shield will. Obviously, you have another Hopefully. weapon, but that's the reason I, I at least personally believe this one belongs in the C tier. Uh, but I know you, you want to fight for that B tier probably. Uh, what else do you, I guess, what else do you have to say about the sword and shield before we go over to good guy and see what he believes? Yeah, I think, you know, it, with shield bash in arenas, it's, it's good utility if you can land it. Um, and I think with Great Axe, like Sword and Shield and Great Axe is a really sleeper, small, it's like arena combo that a lot of people are sleeping on. Um, I mean, Shield Rush is good weaken, good utility, another slow, which is good, AoE slow. So, you know, it, it does bring some stuff to the table, and I think with the armor changes coming up, with the medium being a little stronger and heavy being a little stronger with this patch, I think I think the combos would be there, man. But, um, yeah, you just you, you have to land Leaping Strike. If you don't land it, yeah, it's pretty shit. Okay. For sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, good guy. What do you have to say about it? Would you agree with the maybe like a C plus over musket? Maybe. I think I gotta gotta give it a B, man. It's uh, it's not quite there anymore. You know, the guaranteed leaping strike and the shield bash combo getting uh, tuned down so that you know people have a way to actually react. That was much needed change, but also it you know that that power, that instantaneous gratification of you hitting that leaping strike, pretty much guaranteeing someone's death. Yeah, you know, that being removed uh, definitely makes it fall a little bit, a little bit back down to be where it's you know reasonable, it's understandable, it's able to be able to work with it. I think also it's a double whammy there too with the leaping strike, getting that uh, cowardly punishment slow reduced to three seconds now. Um, it was used to be eight seconds off, fifty percent slow. So that was pretty pretty disgusting. I, I think that's a lot of the other power that came from it. I think now um, it's pretty good still. 
you know, you got seven perks you can work with, you know, on your sword and your shield, uh, especially with the legendary shields. If you guys are looking out for those things, those things are juicy. And yeah, they are. Making no doubt about that. They def they definitely are. Uh, so the next weapon I'm kind of excited about is the fire staff, right? So the fire staff is one that I pretty much never strayed away from. Um, people are starting to use meteor shower. People are starting to use flamethrower. Flamethrower is definitely meta right now when it comes to 3v3. We also see fireballs and very, very obvious choices. You're always going to hit a fireball. You just wait till they have no stamina and you're never going to miss it. Um, this is just a very, very obvious choice for me when it comes to PvP. I love it. And that, that's one of the reasons I believe it belongs in a maybe a high tier B or even mid tier B. I'm telling you what, I definitely think it belongs a little bit farther into it than maybe the sword and shield. Um, and then maybe even hatchet as well. So I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this. I know Cleo used Fire Staff, and you were actually the first one who showed me Fire Staff um, in kind of the build that you went. So what's your thoughts? Where do you think this one belongs in the B tier? Is there a weapon you believe it kind of fits in between? Or uh, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, Fire Staff, it's... Fireball is great. Probably one of the most brain dead abilities in the game. So fun to use. I love using it. <laughs> it's it's you know I went I went from hating Fire Staff and Alpha because it was so overtuned and broken. I was like, oh, I'm never gonna use Fire Staff. And then, you know, I kind of just got with it. But, um, you know, like like the the changes to Pillar made it really good. Whereas if you have two in your arena team, right, like you can get a lot of coordinated bursts in a short time. Um, but then kind of when you blow that load, it's kind of over. And then. You really don't have much to trade with like melee or like great axes that run up on you or you know you can really get shot up by um by bows and muskets i mean burnout's good i i think i think it definitely i think it definitely could go i don't know above sword and shield i mean it, it's decent sustain like if you're versing a melee heavy team right like flamethrower is really good too you could get that off and um, really punish people and if you go a burning build like you get the burning ring and the like on an armor piece, you get the burning flamethrower thing. You know, you could potentially be doing a lot of a lot of DPS to a bruiser team. Oh, so. for sure, flamethrower is way better than I ever remember it being when we, you know, all came back to the game or a good guy pretty much stay. But you know, me and you came back to the game and flamethrower started to be just utilized so so well, doing a ton of damage. I think it's an obvious choice to be in the B tier because it has that kind of capability of being a great great weapon if you're able to hit your pillars, if you're able to play the distance on that flamethrower, you're able to stack those, uh, you know, those burns very very quickly. Um, what's your thoughts here on this one, good guy? Yeah, I definitely got to say uh, Fire Staff probably right right where we have it placed. I think B is pretty solid, honestly, in the Fire Staff. Yeah, you got your um, you got your, uh, your Fireball. That's juicy. It's always going to be a nice, nice bit of damage there. AoE as well, so you're going to be splashed on a lot of people, especially if they're all clumped up together. Burnout, it might be a little bit not as great as you like it to be, honestly. Yeah, I would like a little buff a, to burnout if anyone's listening. A little buff to burnout, yeah. I would like it. Uh, because right now, yeah. you know, it does give you that mobility, but does it really give you that mobility? You're sitting there for, what, two seconds, and then you're finally moving, and you don't even really go that, that far. Uh, I, I know it's you don't want to maybe probably change the, uh, you know, the time it takes to get moving, but you might want to add some damage at the very least, right? Because most people can dodge out of the way. So if you're hitting people with the burnout, maybe make it actually do damage. That's my that's my take on the burnout at the very least on the fire staff. You know, it's so funny, like back in Alpha, fire staff was the most broken weapon. So it, it's been kind of cool to see the ups and downs of it. And, and I know, like, I remember when Pillar early on got patched. It's just weird, like, like how do you... It's, it's, it's almost like falling into the realm of, like, Warhammer, you know? Like... Fire Staff is just one of those things that the more you add, like the more burst that kind of exponentially goes up in war. So I could see for small scale, they don't want it to get too out of hand and kind of maybe give it too much. That's just something to think about. It's the only, it's the only uh, mage weapon that doesn't have CC. So that's the only reason I'm kind of thinking, you know, it's it's got to have a lot more damage in my opinion. But Yeah, no, but for small scale, it's it's rough. I, it's like a, it's a fine line because if you give it way more damage now in wars, yeah, it's I, cracked again. I know exactly what you're saying there, you know? yeah. Yep. But like for arenas, right? Like Blunder, Ice, and VG all give way more utility. That's true. Uh, so before we talk about the Great Sword, because we all want to talk about the Great Sword, the PTR, you know, just released with the Great Sword. We were able to play with it quite a bit and go into the Brimstone Sands area to really mess around with it. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of these weapons in the A tier. B tier, uh, it's really just A and B that we can talk about and trying to switch these weapons up. I want to make sure we have it the most accurate as possible. So let's go through it. The rapier is in a good spot, in my opinion. I don't know your guys' thoughts. If you, I'm going to go through this, and if I have a different kind of 
thought on where they're placed, you guys just let me know as well. But the rapier, I think it's at a good spot. I think the great axe could be moved back just a little bit and we put the spear farther. Honestly, I think that's about the only change out of all of these is that spear needs moved, right? So that's what really led me to this even conversation here is that spear with the perks that it adds, the damage that it does. It has CC. It's so good. It's always been good for small scale. So now that we have arenas for it to really thrive, I, I just want to see if you guys would be okay with moving that spear from A- minus up to right behind the rapier at about an A+. Plus. Uh, Cleo, you good with that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, in the right hand, spear is just cracked. It's impressive, man. And what do you think, good like guy? Because I know, like I said, you've played you've played with it a lot on, on your team at the very least, and you've played against it as well. Would you say the spear belongs maybe in that A+. Plus? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, rapier, spear, they're like, like hand in hand, honestly, these days. It's nice. Nice combo. It is a very, very nice combo. But now we're talking about the Great Sword, which is one of the swords that uh, just recently, like I said, came out in the PTR for us to play with. It's got a lot of really cool abilities from the defensive to the offensive side. It's got the counter. It's got a lot of different uh, abilities that do a lot of damage. And when it comes to offensive, it's got the damage. The one thing it doesn't have is much mobility. So I know Cleo and uh, good guy, you guys were playing around with this one quite a bit, so you could test and kind of give me a good understanding of where this one belongs. So I would want to start with, uh, I don't even know, who probably played this one more? I'll go with Cleo. You probably played with it a little bit more than good guy in the PTR. So I want to start with you. Where do you think this you know, great sword belongs? It's definitely one of the more unique weapons we've seen, right? Like stances are great, and I think the potential for high skill cap with that is a very high skill ceiling because... Um, you know, it just has a lot of good sustain. You got great perks like critical comeback. Um, you know, you could literally block ranged attacks, which um, sword and shield is the only other weapon that could do that. Undying defiance, the ultimate perk on the defiance side. Um, attacking within within three seconds of a blocking uh, block heals for 15% of the damage dealt. In baseline, you heal for 5% of all damage from attacks. I mean, there's just potential for a lot of good sustain and... Um, What's weird about the weapon, though, is that it really doesn't have a lot of combo ability within itself. I was messing with some of the abilities like Steadfast Strike into Skyward Slash, and you could pretty much dodge out of all of them, but it's one of those things that if you if they burn all their stamina, you can rip some wild, wild fucking combos. So, And then Calamity Counter, just like like a really good, kind of like Repose without the, the stun, you know, like just good sustain there, good counterattack. Uh, so high skill cap there, and then, um, you know, just offers a very interesting thing. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how good people can get with this. Um, and with the armor changes where people really can't get away, maybe. That's true. That's um, true with the auto attack. It's going to be interesting kind of, to see. Yeah, I think that could be it's huge. It's going to be interesting to see. So I, I, I could say it could go even S. Like, I mean, if you're... Really? I, 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 I really don't know if it's going to have the burst to take out a healer in a 1v1, which might not deserve the S, but maybe A+. plus, Right? Like... I, I think, depending on how good you can get with it, it could really, really, really be oppressive and sustain, like a sustain as well as great axe, but with even um, more uh, defensive capability. Okay. And, and good guy, I have two questions for you here. Would you agree with the S? And then question two, what would you pair it with? What's a weapon that you say is going to go very, very well with the great sword? I know a lot of people are thinking about a lot of different combos right now. I've heard some of the wildest things. Uh, where do you think this sword belongs in the PvP tier list? And then, like I said, what uh, weapon belongs with it? 